Greetings, beloved technicals here. I got the KSO Ultra and I've been testing firmware for many, many hours. I've got initial results. I'm gonna show you what I got. I'm gonna take you through the process on how to modify your KSO Ultra, get these firmwares, upload them, and I'm gonna to put together and demonstrate some of the numbers because a lot of people saying, doesn't it just make sense to buy another KSO Ultra? Doesn't that make more sense than overclocking this one because it pulls more power? Uh, but I've got some examples where that might not exactly be the case. So let's take a look at that, how to do it, what I'm getting, and whether or not it may be right for you. I'm the Technicals, let's get into it. Gonna need a few things to do this. One, a KSO Ultra. I got mine from yesmining.io. Yesmining.io. Thank you very much. They didn't give me any money for this, but they did send me the device. You can head over to usmining.io. If you use code M20, it gives you $20 off the miner, and you can see that in the checkout. You can head over to usmining.io, use code M20. That's my code, and it gives you a discount of $20 on the device after shipping and everything. It comes out to $349 for a KSO Ultra delivered to you. Additionally, in my conversations with Yes Mining, they're uploading to their website an option for an upgraded power supply for the KSO Ultra because for these overclocks, you're going to need an upgrade power supply. Well, let's talk about that. I've got this one. It's a super duper upgraded Cadillac model that I got on Amazon. Link in the description below if you want to go ahead and grab one of these because ever since my KSO Pro video, I've noticed that the upgraded power supply, the 230 watt, had been selling out pretty quickly. A lot of people getting it. So you may want to go ahead and jump on this if you want to get the upgraded super duper deluxe power supply. Now, there are cheaper options available like a $50 model. Link in the description below for that as well. Also, if you're trying to achieve those very high hash rates, you're going to have to do some modding on on the device itself, which means you have to open it up, which means you are going to void your warranty. You're going to need these copper heat sinks, you're going to need some thermal paste, and you're going to have to open it up. So you may want to consider one of these little screwdriver sets if you don't have one already. And of course, links to everything I talk about are in the description below. And for my conversations with T-Swift, if you need one of these cooling shrouds, which you have to have to upgrade the cooling, I'm going to go ahead and start selling those on my Etsy store. I'm selling them in a two-pack. Link in the description below if you want to buy one. If you don't have a 3D printer, if you do, link below to the file itself if you want to just print it on your own. Finally, one of these 120 millimeter fans. I got this AC Infinity. It has its own controller. It's 120 volts. You can just plug it into an outlet and control and kind of dial in how much cooling you want. And because the mods are identical to the KSO Pro, I'm just going to roll that real quick in a little montage on how to open up the device, how to put copper heat sinks on the MOSFETs, how to reapply the paste to the chips and put it all back together. So let's roll that now. Once again, just to be clear, by doing this, you are taking a risk with your device. You could brick your device. You're going to void your warranty, but you're going to ch you're chasing higher hash rates on a three, four hundred dollar device. So it's not like the end of the world. So to get the firmwares, head over link in the description below over to Swift Mining's Telegram channel. He's got the file for download there. If you want to buy the license outright, the paid version, he'll give that to you. It's bound to the Mac address on your device. So only that device can use it. It's not like you can buy it and resell it to other people. No, no, no. Uh, or they have the developer fee version. Again, it takes half a percent. So again, Swift Mining, check him out. He sells ASICs as well, has great pricing, great guy. Uh, head over to Swift Mining, link in the description below. And once you get the file, this readme in here, very important to go over it. It's not one for one like the KSO Pro. There are several different things about this one that you need to be aware of. Number one, under any circumstances, circumstances, do not reset the device using the button or the in-app in the dashboard, just reset device. If you do that, you're going to have serious problems. You're going to have to have the device repaired. Now, they say that they'll do it for a fee, but it's not like the old device. If something wasn't working out, you just wanted to reset the factory and you press the button. 
don't do that on this one. There is an upload process at the end that tells you how to re-upload some kind of firmware that brings it back to factory settings. Additionally, don't try to power this machine with a 12 volt server power supply unless you're super duper experienced with soldering and science and whatnot. Uh, so if you are, then you probably know why you're not supposed to do this. And that's probably, you're probably not the person to, to even be looking at this video, but don't try to do it. Use a power supply with a barrel plug, a DC power supply. You, buy the one in the description below. The readme file also contains instructions on how to modify the device, the little montage we just watched, and it's got a list of the different firmwares. And you'll note, starting with the 618 giga hash variant, uh, it says that it, it demands the copper heat, heat sinks, the uh, upgraded thermal paste, and forced air through the device. So anything higher than that, which is what you're going to be wanting to go for, uh, is going to require those modifications. So, you know, you could you could you could get this and just try to get eke out a, a little bit more an hundred, extra 162 giga hash by not doing any of these modifications. But the modifications are super easy. It's not I mean, if you're not inclined on opening up electronics and doing this, let me tell you something. I'm not either. And it's super duper easy. Also, don't do it because uh, I, don't, I don't assume any liability for you doing this. So once you get the file, you'll see the different uh, firmware files in here. First thing you're going to want to do is upload per the instructions, the initialization file. You go to the firmware update section in the dashboard of your device, load that init file, initialization file, upload it. It'll ask you to restart the device, and then you're ready to start uh, applying the over overclocking firmwares. If it gives you a failure error, make sure you're not running your uh, Ice River uh, monitoring tool, which we'll get to here in a second, uh, because that could cause a failure. So make sure that's closed, do your initialization file, restart the device, and then move on. And then next you're just gonna start going down the list of the different hash rate or just different firmwares that you wanna try to attempt. So there are the 505, the 562, the 618, the 676, and the 700. Now, per the most recent message in T-Swift's Discord or uh, Telegram, uh, he does not recommend the 700 giga hash unless you are just trying to chase that, that screenshot flex. If you're trying to get there just so you can say you did it, uh, because apparently it requires just a super amount of cooling and it could brick the device. And so for the nature, for the purposes of my testing here, I did not go for it. I stopped at the uh, 676. Uh, so know that before you go in, don't go straight for it or, or you can if you want. I mean, I'd love to know if you actually get it. I'm probably going to wait for other people to attempt it and see if it's safe before I proceed because I don't want to be the pioneer with all the arrows in his back. So once you choose which firmware you want, there are three different versions for most of them, an L, a, a regular, and an H. So L is low voltage, H is high voltage, and no extra letter just means standard. So regular unleaded 91 and 93 premium gasoline for these different um, firmware models. And he says here, start with the L first. So if you want to try the 562, upload the L, uh, update it, the machine will restart and then once it comes back in make sure all your pool information is in there set your fans to 100 percent and let it rip so once the machine's on you're going to want to open your ice river monitoring tool link in the description below you're going to put in the ip address of the device in the monitoring tool make sure you select that it's a kso ultra and click read and that's going to give you a real-time readout of the different chip temperatures the clocks uh, and your different hash rates all in one program that's sitting there on your desktop. And that way you'll be able to monitor and see to make sure the chips aren't going over temperature, if there's any sort of anomalies or anything like that, so you can stop the device before any real damage, you know, occurs, I guess more damage occurs. So make sure you get that when you're doing this process as well. Don't run it while you're doing the initialization file. Don't run it while you're uploading different firmwares because you will get errors. I've noticed that several times throughout this process. If the monitoring tool was running, uh, I did get errors when I was trying to jump to the different firmwares. All right, so you can see right here, I got my testing up. Uh, he recommends leaving it running for about an hour and checking the 30 minute hash rate after an hour to see where the hash rate is at. And so there's a five minute refresh window on the device. So every just after five, 10, 15 minutes, et cetera, uh, the hash rate will update. And so I use that as a gauge to whether or not those firmwares are gonna work because if the firmware loads in and your first five minute hash rate is X and then the 10 minute refresh shows it a little bit lower, it's kind of safe to assume you're not gonna get any higher than that or it's gonna settle out somewhere in between. So I would just kind of abandon that test and move on to the next one. So currently just kind of jumping to the results here, I found the best success on the 618H, the high voltage model, uh, because it looks like it was starting to settle out somewhere in the range of 600. And so this is the 618. Uh, that was sort of acceptable. And the most stable version 
I found with the tightest uh, uh, plus or minus was on the 562H. All of the L's, all of the regulars uh, didn't, they, they kind of were all over the place. And on the 676 regular, which there is only the regular, there's no L or H, uh, at the 15 minute mark, it went to zero, it aired out. So I'm not sure what the issue there was, if it was an overheating issue. All my chip temperatures were green, uh, but it did zero out. So I kind of nixed that and went back down. Uh, but in terms of the actual stability, the H version seemed to work the best. And you can see here on the power as well, because the total draw, my fan, AC Infinity fan draws 20 watts. So I'm backing that out, looking for the actual draw on it. Uh, they're, they're in line with the different hash rates. They're almost exactly where they need to be quoted based on the, uh, the telegram message. And so the most stable, uh, and the most you know, consistent are on the high powered versions. And you might have better luck because it's a lot of silicon lottery involved in this. Uh, but I found the best luck on the 562H and the 618H. I did not run a test on the uh, 505 because I'm not trying to mess with that. It's just too low. I wanna get, you know, I wanna get the highest I possibly can and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and then I didn't wanna go to the 700 because it was, you know, risky. And then the 676, sadly, I got the error on. I may try that again. Uh, but as for right now, the device is off. And once I get it back on, I'm going right back into the 618H. And once again, if you need to reset your device to factory settings, don't just press the button. Don't just press the reset thing on the uh, on the dashboard. He's got here at the bottom of the readme file, factory reset instructions, upload the revert update BGZ file, uh, and then do not click confirm to restart the machine. Uh, there are different, there are instructions there. So make sure that you don't do that if you need to reset it back to factory uh, factory settings. All right, so many people asking a question, why wouldn't I just buy another KSO Ultra? You can certainly do that. We'll take a look at that here in a second. So currently the firmwares that have been, are being offered, uh, if you go down the list here that I've, I've sort of highlighted, uh, the your, the total wattage increase on these different firmwares, 150%, 200, 235, 300, if, and the ha corresponding hash rate. So how much extra hash rate you're getting. So on the top end, if you're able to get that 700, you're burning 300 or three times the amount of power to get 75% more hash rate. So you're not even getting double the hash rate and you're using three times the power. So why wouldn't I just buy another one? So, I mean, that's a viable, it's a, you know, it's a fair question. This I made to visualize. I'm sure there's a better way to do it, but I was kind of looking for the sweet spot. Like where's the sweet spot in terms of hashes per watt? And as you can kind of see uh, here as it creeps up, it's inverted on the, the axes. Uh, but when you get to the 676, after that, from there to the 700, the amount of power increases a lot more. It doesn't increase in a linear fashion. Uh, so I think that 676 is probably the sweet spot. Luckily for me, I'm getting great results on the 618. Uh, but if you're able to do the 676, for me personally, that's where I think, based on this, the sweet spot would be. And so for the purposes of taking a look at a stock version versus an overclocked version, like, is it really worth it to do this? Well, I think there's a lot of factors at play here. And again, I'd love, I know people in the comments are going to try to pick it apart and find out where my errors are, because I'm sure there's an error in here somewhere, because honestly, I don't believe the results. A new KSO Pro, if you buy it over on Yes Mining, 349 to your door. So we're just taking that one for one. Spot price of Casper right now, about 18 cents, 18.1 cents for per Caspa. Currently, you're getting 8.18 CASPA per day. That's, again, of a spot check. And all this assumes that none of this changes. We'll get to some projections here in a second. Uh, and then we're taking our total profit or with a power rate at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So you're going to have to do your own math at that. Again, I can't adjust, you know, infinitely for this. And, you know, things change so rapidly. I can just take the spot check right now. If we're taking a look at that, your total profit per day is $1.24 on a, just a stock KSO uh, Ultra, which gives you an ROI date of 280 days. So if you mod the thing, here's the different hash rates, the 505, 618, et cetera, the total corresponding power, how much CASPA per day you would be taking in, your, uh, your total dollar value in CASPA, your power costs because of the increased power, uh, your profit and your ROI date. So as you can see, overclocking it, brings your ROI date down, brings your profit up. So you're taking that 280 days down to 179 by overclocking. That's really just because you're getting more cash. But now I know when everybody does these pro projections, because they can only go on the data that's out right now, the current spot price of CASPA, how much CASPA you're making per day, uh, you, you base these things on that. ROI is entirely based on that snapshot. That's why I don't subscribe to the whole ROI thing. I just abandon it completely. I freed my mind. But if you're mining CASPA, it's safe to say you're one of those CASPA people that think CASPA price is going to go way up. A, a lot of people think that. And so if that's the case, 
CASPA also has a very aggressive emission schedule. Every month, uh, the block reward gets cut by like 5% or you get 95% of the previous month's block reward every single month. So it is very aggressive. So it makes sense to mine to accumulate as much CASPA as quickly as possible versus looking at it through an efficiency lens, like something like Bitcoin, like, oh, I'm just going to mine it long term. I want to bring my hashes per watt down. The, as low as they can possibly be because I'm doing this as a long-term play. I don't think that applies here with an emission schedule as aggressive as CASPA because the, those rewards are going to go down. And that's not even considering the network hash rate going through the goddamn roof because so many miners are hitting the network, KS5L, M. How, how long until Bitmain releases the KS27M or whatever? Um, it's only going to go up from here. So the rewards are going to come down and that's on top of an aggressive emission schedule. Now, if price goes up and it balances out from there, then it could all wash, but you can't sort of predict and you can't rely on price, uh, but you can go on things that you do know, which you do know the emissions are gonna go down. You do know the net hash is gonna go up, you know, barring some sort of calamity. Uh, so with that being the case, I think the strategy is to accumulate as much CASPA as you possibly can, as quickly as you possibly can, while the rewards are high. And so to illustrate that, because I love, I know everybody loves looking at spreadsheets from a, a middle-aged man. Let's say instead of doing this whole overclock business, you just bought yourself two ultras instead. You don't overclock them, you just bought two. So your cost up front, $6.98 to your door for two KSO ultras. These are your stock boys. You have one that you OC'd, and then if you just bought one stock. So you have a buy one stock, buy two stock, buy one and overclock it. So these are your prices here. This is how much CASPA per day you're gonna be taking in here. Your power cost per day. Pause the video if you wanna comb through this. Uh, but taking a look at it, running the projection, and again, this has no, uh, this is not influenced in any way by network hash rate and their difficulty. Uh, rewards going down based on net difficulty. It's only going based on today's snapshot at today's emission schedule, knowing what next month's and the month after and so forth uh, schedule is going to be. It's really as uh, fine as I could make it and with the level of patience that I have. But going through month to month, you have the come, the come here, uh, cumulative. That's what that means. How much cumulative money, dollars, not CASPA, because I'm taking the spot price here. And this assumes CASPA price doesn't do anything. It stays exactly the same. Uh, you would ROI on the two stock KSO Ultras at the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 month mark. So about a year. One overclocked uh, KSO Ultra, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 months. So you hit that mark uh, you, where you paid for it at that eight month mark. Again, because this is only taking into consideration the profitability of Casper. You're selling out every day. The price doesn't change and you're just kind of waiting for it to pay itself off. And if you bought one, it's exactly the same as buying two stock. It's just half the time you get, you get it in the same URI in the same amount of time, uh, but you know, you're just, you just have half as much. So take from that what you will, again, does not account for difficulty increase, assumes no change in price. These are the results I got. I'd love for someone to pick it apart and tell me I'm wrong because it would just make an opportunity for me to make more videos and get more views and get more money. So anyway, I'd love to know what you guys are doing. If you've overclocked yours yet, I know I wanted to be first to the first out of the, the gates uh, with my results. But again, I'd love to know if you're overclocking yours and what sort of results you got. If you had any additional cooling modifications that you made to your KSO Ultra, let me know in the comments below. If you're not already, subscribe to the channel and like the video for more content like this. On the technicals, see you next time.